In this section, we will talk about uh, virtualization. Guys, this is a really uh, important uh, technology anymore. In the networks, we are not just using hardware devices and appliances. We are also using lots of uh, virtualized machines, servers, or even some network functions are being virtualized. So let's start with a virtualization term. Server virtualization is the process of using software to create multiple independent virtual servers or multiple independent containerized operating systems containers on a physical server. Network functions virtualization is the process of virtualizing specific network functions such as firewall function into a virtual machine so that they can be run in common hardware instead of a dedicated appliance. So one of the main drivers behind the server virtualization was that server hard hardware resources were being underutilized, physical servers were typically each running a single operating systems with a single application and using only about 10% to 25% of the CPU resources. And virtual machines and containers increase the overall efficiency and cost effectiveness of a server by maximizing the use of available resources. When it comes to a virtual machine, a virtual machine is a software emulation of a physical server with an operating system. From an application's point of view, the VM provides the look and feel of a real physical server, including all its components such as CPU, memory, and network interface cards. The virtualization software that creates VMs and performs the hardware abstraction that allows multiple VMs to run concurrently is known as a hypervisor. VMware vSphere, Microsoft Hyper-V, Strix Zen Server and Red Hat kernel-based virtual machine KVMs are some of the popular hypervisors in the server virtualization. So there are two types of hypervisors guys and they are type 1 hypervisor and type 2 hypervisor. Type 1 uh, in this type uh, hypervisors run directly on the system hardware and it is commonly referred to as bare metal or native. When it comes to type so uh, this one uh, requires a host OS to run. This is the type of the hypervisor that is typically used by client devices. So let's go ahead with the virtual switch term. A virtual switch is a software based layer 2 switch that operates like a physical ethernet switch. A vSwitch enables VMs virtual machines to communicate with each other within a virtualized server and with external physical networks through the physical network interface cards. Multiple vSwitches can be created under a virtualized server, but network traffic cannot flow directly from one vSwitch to another vSwitch within the same host and the vSwitches cannot share the same PNIC. And some of the most popular uh, vSwitches are including the Cisco Nexus 1000 VE, Cisco Application Virtual Switch, Open vSwitch, IBM DVS, and vSphere Switch. On the screen, you can see a figure which illustrates a virtualized server with three vSwitches connected to the virtual network interface cards VNIX of the VMs as well as the PNIX. You can see in here vSwitch 1, we have vSwitch 2 and vSwitch 3 and they are connected to the VMs with the VNIC interfaces. You can see in here and they are also connected to the physical switches with the P 
PNIC interfaces. Since network traffic cannot flow from, from one vSwitch to another one, network traffic coming from, for example, let's say coming from VM1 and testing to VM0, this traffic should pass, should flow through the next generation firewall in here you can see. Network functions virtualization is an architectural framework that defines standards to decouple network functions from proprietary hardware based appliances and have them run in software on standard x86 servers. It also defines how to manage and orchestrate the network functions. Network function refers to the function performed by a physical appliance such as a firewall or a router function. Some of the benefits of network functions virtualization uh, may be uh, you may have opportunities to test and deploy new innovative services virtually and with lower risk or uh, you may have ability to scale up and down in capacity on demand and you may have uh, improved return on investment for new services also you may have reduced capital expenditure capex and operational expenditure opex through reduced equipment costs and efficiencies in space power and cooling 